Hi guys, welcome to Big Laws Official. Today I'm going to do a little prediction video for Britain's Strongest Man, which is taking place on the 27th of January up in Sheffield. Uh, as some of you know, I've pulled out. I picked up a back injury uh, nearly three months ago now, just a really weird back injury. I uh, was doing some deadlifts, doing it um, off blocks. As I put the weight down on one of my reps, I just felt this weird shudder through my body. Um, had a scan on my back and unfortunately I've got a, a bulging disc, which is created some pressure against the nerve and it was causing a lot of pain. I've been getting an awful lot of physio and treatment and I'm well on the road to recovery, back training again, just in two earlier stages to kind of step in and compete against the best guys in the country. Uh, for, for me, I want to compete at my best um, and I feel I'd still only be like at 70% at the moment. So I'm going to go up, enjoy it, watch it. And um, I thought because I'm not competing, why not do a little prediction video I think um, I know most of these guys pretty well. Obviously, I know the events for the competition, which is something I think a lot of you guys don't take into consideration when you, when you look at your, you, when, when I see people predicting things online. Um, it's an important thing to do is, is evaluate what events we have in each competition as well. So let's get started on that. So obviously, the first name on everyone's list is going to be Eddie Hall. He's the four-time champion, current world's strongest man, 500 kilo deadlift you know, world record holder, the guy's phenomenal. And I, I would think most people would have him as their number one to win. Um, I'm gonna put him as number one as well, but I don't think it's gonna be all his own way this time. Um, a lot of people go, oh, you're absolutely crazy, Loz. Um, you know, Eddie's unbelievable, he's the world's strongest man. And that's, that's all true. But Eddie, his main goal was to win world's strongest man. The guy pushed himself to unbelievable limits to do that. Um, he's suffering with a few little injuries. I know he's got a few niggles and injuries that um, he, he's kind of probably not being as honest about with a lot of people. But um, obviously I've got a bit more in-depth knowledge on it. Um, I still think he'll win, but I don't think he's going to have it all his own way and, and dominate every single event. Um, he was so motivated to win Worlds. I think after you kind of achieve that, that pinnacle, for some people... The motivation then isn't kind of always there, and I, I think we'll see that with Eddie. He's doing, he's so busy with work, he's getting lots and lots of roles to do, and he's probably just not as focused on his training. And you know, the, the effort that he put into Wind Worlds is, is, is not going to have that motivation anymore. So I'm sure he'll still want to win. You know, he's a competitive guy, and I, I think he, he probably will pip it. But um, I think there's a few guys that might be able to push him this year. The second name um, on my list who I, I think is going to really challenge Eddie. Um, Looking at the events, he doesn't really have a weak event, is um, Graham Hicks. Hicks, he kind of, he's quite quiet, just kind of gets on with his training. Um, I speak to him from time to time. I've seen some of his training videos. He's going to be exceptionally good on the log. Um, he might even win the log. You know, Graham is an unbelievable log lifter. Obviously, Eddie's an unbelievable log lifter too. But um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Graham go away and win that event. His deadlift's coming on. He's lost some weight and his speed is back up to what it used to be. So the medleys and moving events he's going to be quick at. I just don't see him kind of having a bad event. And I, I really think he's going to push Eddie for the title. Now is when it gets interesting. Um, there's so many good guys this year. Um, a lot of new faces, a lot of old faces. The two guys you're going to look out for next, I, I feel, would be like um, Terry Hollands, who's shed loads of weight, um, looks Fabulous. Um, sounds a bit gay, but he does look good. Uh, fair play to the guy for, for stripping down the way he has. Um, I think now he's kind of getting focused with his strength training again. It's good to see him back kind of to his best. I think at Europe's last year, he was in great shape. Um, as the year went on, he kind of didn't do so well, focused then more on his, his weight loss. Uh, but he seems focused now with his training. Uh, he's looking good. The only thing for me is I feel that the log and the front hold may be events that cost him. I think everything else he'll be up there and hard to beat. Uh, the, the thing for me with Terry, I think if he can have a good performance on the log and come somewhere mid-table on, on the front hold, then he's got a good chance of really pushing the, the, for, for a you know, top three place, maybe even second or first. But um, it depends how those two events go. He's going to be a good deadlifter. He moves well. His, his yoke will be good. His stones are good. I just think with the weight loss, will that affect his pressing? And the front hold is just an event he doesn't seem to do well at. He's so tall, got long arms. And um, if that event's in it, he's going to struggle a little bit. Uh, Felix. Mark Felix is just a, a phenomenon. Uh, I think he's like 51 or coming up to 52 now. Still outperforming, you know, guys half his age. Um, Mark's unbelievable. Uh, I've, I've known him, you know, as long as I've been doing strongman. 
and he just doesn't seem to go anywhere. Sometimes he gets better. He had a few injuries last year, which held him back a little bit. But he's not someone anyone's talking about. And, you know, Mark, he's got good events. His deadlift is unbelievable, obviously. He moves well. He's good at stones. Um, but he, again, is in the, the kind of Terry category with how well he does on the log. There's a lot of good log lifters competing this year. And I feel Felix needs a good, solid performance on the log to really make sure he challenges for the, the top three podium place. Um, he's actually really good at front hold for a guy with such long arms. So it's really just the log for him that's the, the one event that I think could cost him. Um, I haven't seen him compete since Worlds last year where he got injured. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of shape he's in. But he's not someone I'd kind of overlook ever. If I was competing, I, 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 he'd, he'd be someone I'd be worried about, definitely. I just realized that I totally forgot to mention Bish. Adam Bishop looking absolutely amazing in his training videos right now and genuinely has a top chance of um, coming top three this year. His deadlift is absolutely world class. He's brought on his pressing and he's always been good at events like the yoke and the medleys and stones. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he could do. He had a bit of a bad year last year. He was very unlucky at the British falling with the shield, um, which should have been a good event for him anyway. And then obviously at Europe, he ended up tearing his bicep. So he's pretty much had all year to be really hungry, train hard. And um, from what I'm seeing, he's looking really, really good. So yeah, one more guy to look out for definitely is Adam Bishop. So then we're going to look at um, the new guys coming up. Obviously, Stockman brothers, not really new. Um, Luke obviously has been around a long time. Um, and, and Tom has been around for a few years now, improving all the time. Uh, Tom's one of those guys I think most people look at now and see as a future, you know, top top guy he's gonna you know he's gonna make the final worlds hopefully go on and, and you know win we'd all love to see that um i'm not sure he's ready yet to to, to beat the guys like eddie and, and graham but he's got some events that he's really really good at he's hungry he looks focused in his training um and i'm sure tom's actually never beaten his brother um i think i'm correct in saying that so luke's still got that kind of the, the winning edge over him but um i think we're all waiting for tom to make that step up but it's going to be another good battle between those two i think um luke is is not to be overlooked he's a good all-round athlete no weak events um just good all round uh, and we'll put in a solid performance uh, and tom if he can hold it together and bring his his a game he, he could definitely push for a podium position who else are we going to be looking at um so a couple of new names for for people to look out for Someone I've trained with a number of times, I, I see as a very good athlete and um, an exceptional log lifter is Aaron Page. He's really knuckled down. A couple of years back, and Aaron won't mind me saying this, you know, he, he kind of was running his mouth a little bit about what he could do on the log. Um, but then he would underperform in competition. But to be fair, you know, a lot of us have done that. Graham Hicks did that for a little while. Uh, and then all of a sudden, bang, Graham was, you know, hitting the big log numbers in competition. I've seen the videos of Aaron He's come to train with me a few times, so I know what he's capable of. Um, he, he, he's one of those guys who works really hard, just knuckles down, gets on with it, and I think he can perform well. I don't think he'll be top three overall, but he's certainly someone to look out for, particularly on the log lift, and I think a solid performance throughout um, everything. You know, there's no big gaping weaknesses again, but maybe just isn't quite good enough at everything to, to really challenge for those top three positions yet. I feel he needs one more year of kind of knuckling down with his training, just bringing that static strength up. This, you know, it's nothing against his ability. He's a great lifter on all, all lifts. It's just the standard's that high. And 10 kilos makes a big difference. I, I see so many people kind of comment on videos and training videos and think that people are going to step up and beat the likes of Terry and Felix, myself and Eddie. And it, it's only small margins. And when you step up to that higher level competition, there's more people that can get in between you on events. So uh, like a world's strongest man level competition, I could say I won the yoke and I might have six or seven people between, uh, like I say, a Tom Stoltman, whereas a UK strongest man, if I won the yoke, he might be second on it. So it makes it harder to throw someone off on a lower level competition. But at the higher level you go up, there's just little factors like that. There's more people that can get in between you. Uh, and just 10 kilos difference on a lift can make a big difference. So I, I expect those kind of top names to, to be coming out on top, but there's certainly names that are going to push um, someone I haven't seen compete for a long time moved from um, Scotland to the States is Ken Nowicki and I know he's been focused hard I've seen a few of his videos he's going to be keen to come over and get that qualifying spot for Worlds because you're going to have guys Eddie's obviously the man to beat everyone wants to beat Eddie he is number one world's strongest man he's the favourite you're going to have like the Hicksies 
Stoltman brothers, um, Terry and Mark, are going to be battling for the, the top, for second and third place, I, I think. And then it's a battle for the other guys trying to get that top five position to qualify for World's Strongest Man. You know, you get a good performance of the British, and it almost guarantees you a spot at World's Strongest Man. And if Eddie's definitely, you know, not going to compete at Worlds this year, it opens up another spot. Um, I made the final of Worlds, so I'm pre I've pretty much secured my um, qualifying spot. So again, you know, it gives other people an opportunity, and there's so many guys that are going to be fighting for that. Um, you know, we've got loads. I, I don't see any weak guys at, at Britain's Strongest Man anymore. Where a few years back, I, I, you could guarantee that certain guys would, would be the, the bottom few guys. But now, the mid middle of the pack is so close and it's so hard to break into that top level. If you think for the last 10 years, Terry Hollands, Mark Felix, myself and Eddie Hall have secured four of the spots. There's usually only one spot for someone else to come in and you've had like Hicksie come and take that position, Tom Stockman's getting there now, Luke's been there, but you've still got those kind of four guys that, that always come out on, on top in the competitions and it's time for the younger guys to step up and, and knock us back down. So it's going to be nice for me to watch. Um, you know, I always like to compete in the British. I've won it twice. I was second last year. Um, but I, I, I'm also a big fan of Strongman as well. That's what I started. You know, that's why I started it in the first place. I just loved watching these guys on TV. So I'm quite excited to be just going up as a fan. It's going to be a great show. Um, Sheffield Arena. I think um, tickets are still available. I think it's Ticketmaster. .co.uk. I will just check for you guys. Yeah, if you search for Giants Live, ticketmaster.co.uk, tickets are still available. Make sure you get up there. As I said, I won't be competing, but I'm definitely going to come up. I want to meet all the fans, um, spend time with you guys. Uh, hopefully, kind of, you know, I might be able to get on um, the, the floor and talk to you guys and explain a few of the events. And, you know, just my kind of knowledge of the sport is, I think it's pretty good. I know, I know what these guys are doing and I know how, how good they all are. Um, so it's going to be a great show. Hopefully see lots of you there. Um, and keep coming back to the page. We've got lots more planned. And uh, Take care.